Hey, welcome back. It is time to talk NFL football. It is the Not Zone from SportsNot.com. We appreciate you guys being here. Do us a favor. If you don't already subscribe to the YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Come on. It is March Madness outside of football. I know. I know it's outside of football. I get it. But do that. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notifications bell. Give us a thumbs up if you would. We appreciate it. And it is the we. It is me, Scott Colbranson. I am one of the hosts here along with my co-host, Ryan Dyrud, he is the founder of the Los Angeles Football Network. He joins us from Los Angeles. We're coast to coast, as you know, at sportsnot.com. We're going to talk all things NFL. And, of course, we had some more signings, some breaking news yesterday. Ryan, big Trent Brown, perhaps one of the biggest men to ever play in the NFL. Of course, New England Patriots twice, was with the Raiders a little bit, had a kind of a, a, a rough stay with the Raiders. Now he's going to be protecting – Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting signing. I know that the Bengals needed that protection. They needed some help on the offensive line. It seems like they do every year. It seems like one of the limiting factors on why they haven't won a Super Bowl, frankly. But uh, Trent Brown going to the Bengals. Are you surprised by that? I mean, the market for him was not massive, but you had to believe, even though he's starting to get up there now a little bit in age, uh, you had to believe that you know somebody of that size with that experience wasn't going to last very long. Yeah, exactly. And you know, what's up, Scott? Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, I think this is a a pretty underrated signing, in my opinion. Um, mm. He feels like I don't know why it, it feels like Trent Brown's like 45 years old. He's only 30. I mean, <laughs> it's only 30. So he's getting up there, but getting up there in 30, age, getting up there, but he's only 30. I mean, he could potentially yeah. have a good five to seven years, you know, left to ball. And you know, they have Orlando Brown as who I would assume will be their left tackle and move Trent mm -hmm. Brown to right tackle or vice versa, but you got a pair of Browns now playing for the Bengals. Ironically enough, I just came up with that on the fly. That was a, that was a fun fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's good. I mean, obviously when you have a $53 million quarterback, one of the top five quarterbacks in football, who's been injured two of his four years in the league, you got to do whatever it takes to keep that guy upright. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately he's getting on the moniker of injury prone and, and you got to do whatever you can. So adding another tackle to that is a, is a very smart play. And I haven't uh, looked, it's been a wild day as always, haven't looked at the oh, contract yeah. details. Maybe you have that, but I think regardless, it's a really good signing and one that is probably underrated, but one that could, it could be one of those top signings of free agency, Scott, that we talked about, right? The ones that the splash ones are obviously everyone talks about a lot, but I think back to somehow always bring it back to LA, but I think back to the Rams <laughs> five years ago when they signed Andrew Whitworth from the bank mm. as a left tackle. And it was like, okay, it was a good signing, but that ended up being, I think a big reason why they won the Super Bowl two years ago. Obviously Matthew Stafford's by reason number one, but Whitworth as that left tackle was the big one. And so I think Trent Brown can potentially, potentially give that added juice to this Bengals team. Yeah, he signed a one-year contract, so uh, the Bengals aren't on the hook for a lot there. So it's kind of like a prove-it deal, and we'll see how he does there. And he's played 100 regular season games, 93 starts, uh, four postseason post games that he has appeared in. Also, Trent Brown, by the way, a seventh-round draft pick, right? Yeah, love it. Seventh-round draft pick. So, you know, a lot of times, okay, you're talking quarterbacks, maybe not so much, except for Brock Purdy. But you look at you look at other players at other positions. There are a lot of stories, just like Trent Brown, who kind of, yeah, he came out of Florida. It was a program at the time was kind of not where it had been. Uh, but but he he, it's always in the spotlight because it's in the SEC, and he kind of flew under the radar and was probably because he was so big and at the time he may be a little overweight he played himself into great shape into the nfl and then of course goes and plays with the uh, 49ers and then off to the patriots in that big deal he signed that big free agent deal after being drafted by san francisco and then on to the raiders and now back to the patriots now back in cincinnati right yeah. where i'm at so it, it'll be interesting to see what happens there in pro bowl in 19 with the raiders that first season he was there so yeah. good little... signing there Fun little quick story for you, Scott, mm -hmm. uh, ra random, but um, the current defensive line co-defensive coordinator coach for the USC Trojans, uh, he was formerly the defense line coach for the Rams, Coach Eric Henderson. We had him on our USC show a few weeks ago and we're talking to him and he got his, after playing for the Bengals a mm -hmm. couple of seasons, he got his coaching start for the Georgia Military Academy. Oh. And when he was a coach there, Trent Brown was there. He mentioned no Trent way. Brown being one of his his uh, athletes and obviously then Brown transferred 
uh, to Florida from there. Um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a funny ironic that we talked to Coach Henny. He was just talking about Trent Brown, and now <laughs> Trent Brown's playing for his former team that he played for in the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, there you go. All right. Well, we are going to shift gears now. We're going to talk Pittsburgh Steelers. They've been a little busy. Same division. Yes, yeah, same division. We were just talking about the Bengals, and you had your Browns joke, and now we're getting to the Steelers. And to talk about the Steelers, we go uh, to our good friend Jarrett Bailey. If you want to know where Jarrett's at, Jarrett's got Jarrett. You got like twelve jobs, so I got to name them all off. So give me a second. <laughs> it's great. It means that he's the, he's good at what he does. Jarrett Bailey, of course, NFL writer at USA Today, A to Z Sports, where you can catch him. He's also the deputy editor at Behind the Steel Curtain. So if you want to talk Steelers, hey, and uh, don't forget to catch the Pump Fake podcast. It's a Believe podcast. Good stuff there, Jarrett. Man, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, man, you know, I'm always uh, willing to hop on for you guys, so I appreciate the invite. All right. Well, here's the deal. Uh, I, the, the one job you, unfortunately, I know you just quit one job, which was the head of the Kenny Pickens fan club, <laughs> right? So you had, to, you had to step aside there <laughs> with Pittsburgh's move in the quarterback room. I joke, of course, but we have fun. Yeah, yeah no, um, you know, the past week um, has been the most excited that I've been as a Steelers fan in – probably since Pickett was drafted. So it has been, it's been a chaotic week, man. And it doesn't yeah. look like it's slowing down, but uh, yeah, man, they've been wheeling and dealing and it's been such a refreshing, uh, a refreshing thing to see in Pittsburgh, a team that for the longest time, like this was just a dead period for them. But now I think that they kind of felt the heat and were like, we got to do something different. And Omar Khan, Mike Tomlin, they've uh, no, they've, they're really going for it. And it's refreshing to see. Yeah, I know. I know everybody, all Steeler fans are excited. Let's start. Obviously, we've got to start with the the quarterbacks here. So you go from Kenny Pickens and, and the dysfunction there and, and the inability to kind of do what you want your quarterback to do in the NFL to going out and getting Russell Wilson for, you know, basically a six pack of beer. <laughs> and then you get Justin Fields for a six round, fourth round conditional. But that would mean Russell Wilson's hurt or doesn't play or is beat out. Whatever the case may be, you're looking at most likely a six round pick. I mean, the complete change and turnover of that quarterback room, Jarrett. Let's start there. Tell me just how significant it is for this franchise moving forward. It's it's incredibly significant because coming into the offseason, I think every every Steelers fan was like, oh, man, you know, we're going to hope for the best. But it looks like it's probably going to be, you know, Kenny Pickett plus, you know, Ryan Tannehill or Jacoby Brissett if they bring back Mason Rudolph, something of that nature. And there really, really wasn't much to look forward to. It felt very much like they were punting on this season. But then as the new league year started, you know, they make the signing of Russell Wilson one year, 1.2, 1.12 million dollars or something of that nature uh, in that neighborhood. And then it's reported that not only did, you know, the Steelers want to make that deal, but veterans, uh, Cam Hayward, FaceTime Russ for an hour, TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, Pat Fryermuth were all heavy in the recruiting process of bringing Russ to Pittsburgh. And that said that they knew that Kenny Pickett wasn't the guy. And I think that they realized Kenny Pickett wasn't the guy once he got hurt and Mason Rudolph stepped in and led them to the playoffs and played respectable against Buffalo in the playoff game. Um, and in the midst of all that, um, Kenny Pickett refused to dress as the backup in Seattle in week 17. So it was just a snowball effect from there. Once Rudolph played really well, once Pickett refused to dress, I think that that was kind of when things were set in motion. Um, I think that Pittsburgh wanted Pickett around, um, but once once they signed Russ, it was very evident that Pickett wasn't happy about that, and so they traded him. Um, and then that, I think, is what really opened the door back up for the Justin Fields trade, where there was interest at first, and then you know you signed Russell Wilson, there didn't really feel like a need to go out and get Justin Fields as well. But then you know Russ being the only quarterback on the roster that opened the door back up, you go get Justin Fields for practically nothing. Um, and they went from a quarterback room of Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, and Mason Rudolph, who are all now in Philadelphia, Buffalo, and Tennessee, respectively, to getting Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. That'll cost them roughly $4 million and a, uh, a, a six-round pick that could become a fourth to get them. So it, it's been an incredible turnover for practically nothing, and it's, it, it is an artwork of how to run a franchise that Omar Khan has put on, man. It's been tremendous to see. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, a, a pure masterclass, if you will. But Jared, what's yeah. up, brother? It's great to great to meet you. Thanks for coming on. I always see you on Twitter. I think we maybe interacted a few times. But sure, never sure. Met. So, yeah. so great seeing you. Um, I almost brought on a, a whopper on the show just to show my hand size uh, compared to <laughs> Kenny Pickett's, but didn't quite have time. But when you look at uh, the new coach, right? You go from Matt Canada OC now to Arthur Smith, mm -hmm. and the system fit there is interesting with Russ. So, what's your thoughts on kind of offensive system fit we've seen what arthur smith you know before obviously the failed experiment in atlanta obviously had a lot of success with ryan Tannehill and kind of a run first tile offense in tennessee where which got him the head coaching job so kind of just how do you see the fit with arthur smith and russ a lot of people who would be detractors of the fit you know point out that russ didn't really utilize the middle of the field last year in denver um and point out that russ is really more of a creator um and you know, that might not have been why it worked with Sean Payton and everything. I think it was also a personality thing with Sean Payton where that wasn't going to work. But um, nonetheless, I think that the fit makes sense. Um, you know, you look at what Arthur Smith did the last time he was in OC uh, with Tennessee. It was run the hell out of the football, set up play action for deep bombs to A.J. Brown. I think we're going to see a lot, a lot of that. And they're going to run the ball with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren and set up play action bombs to George Pickens, which – you know, Russ might not be the Russ of Seattle, but one thing that he still does well is chuck it. And they also <laughs> have him. They, they have a meeting set up with Mike Williams, uh, the former Chargers receiver on Thursday. So it's very evident what they want to do. And it's we're going to run the ball. We're going to utilize, you know, Darnell Washington and Pat Fryermuth underneath is like these safety blankets. And then we're going to let Russ just launch it <laughs> a few times a game. And as long as Pickens and Williams come down with a few of them, then, hey, this offense could be fun. Um, and again, it's not to say some things that other people are saying right now is like, Oh man, you know, it's, it's Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. No one's expecting either of them to like become top 10 to 12 quarterbacks. The thing with the Steelers last year is they didn't have any starting quality quarterbacks on the roster. They had bottom tier mm -hmm. quarterbacks. If fields and or Russ are anything between like the 17th and 20th best quarterbacks in the league, then, Hey, guess what? They're playing a third place schedule again. They just won 10 games playing a third place schedule this past year. As long as Russ is like, competent as long as justin fields is competent they can be a 10 win team and you know maybe win a playoff game and that would be a, a big upgrade over what we've seen uh in recent years so i think that the fit makes sense for both quarterbacks uh if fields does end up playing i mean you look at what arthur smith was trying to run the past few years in atlanta he was doing it with marcus mariota who's basically just justin fields light um <laughs> i think i think that it would be a great fit for justin fields i think it's going to be a good fit for russ and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how the offense does operate. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And, and like you said, you know what you get with Russell Wilson. The narrative, and I wrote about this a couple times, Jarrett, this past season on Sports Not, about mm -hmm. how this narrative about Russell Wilson being washed was wrong because he had a good year. Yes, he's not the Russell Wilson of five or six years ago, who would be, but he did have a good season despite all the dysfunction they had in Denver. Now, we can't just stop with the quarterbacks, Jarrett, because – then they go out and they sign one of our favorite players, which is uh, Patrick Queen, the linebacker, of course, from the Baltimore Ravens, improving that defense. And they go get Deshaun Elliott out of Carolina. Uh, so, so it's not just they address the quarterback. They've started to look at all of those positions that, that, that the Steelers had needs at. We'll get to wide receiver last in just a minute. You talked about Mike Williams coming in, but there's other news there, too, and other rumors going on. But talk about the Queen and the Elliott signing, too, and what that means for that Steelers defense. And you talk about winning 10 games in in that division now with the Browns better, the Bengals, we'll see what happens if Joe Burrow can stay healthy. Uh, that division is going to be tough. So you look at it, they had to do some more on defense, right? Yeah, they did. Um, they, you know, last off season, they really went all in with the off ball linebacker position. They completely revamped it. Um, they signed a Landon Roberts. They signed Cole Holcomb. They signed Quan Alexander. The only issue is that both Holcomb and Alexander were lost for the season in the middle of the year. And so they were left scrambling. They brought back Miles Jack out of retirement, who actually played admirably um, in coming in and whatnot. But I think that the signings of both Patrick Queen and Deshaun Elliott um, highlight a, a, a bigger image for the Steelers, and that's that they want Minka Fitzpatrick to have less on his plate. Deshaun Elliott's a very good uh, box safety who can uh, give run support. Patrick Queen's a very good coverage linebacker. You know, the past couple seasons, they've really had Minka Fitzpatrick wearing a lot of hats. And, you know, people look at his numbers and whatnot and say, oh, I mean, he's not getting as many interceptions. Well, that's because they're asking him to do a lot. Now, he doesn't have to come down on the box to help with run support. That can be Deshaun Elliott's job. He doesn't have to help patrol the middle of the field. That can be Patrick Queen's job. They want Minka Fitzpatrick to just sit in center field, watch the quarterback, and get takeaways like he did, you know, in 2019, 2020, and, and 21. 
And that is, I think the ultimate goal is having help at all three levels. And, uh, you know, you got TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith as well with Patrick Queen in the middle of the defense and then Minka on the back end and Joey Porter Jr. on the back end. This defense could be very special next year. And uh, there's a very clear image and proof of concept in mind that they have. Yeah, it feels feels like the steel curtain days, at least on paper with mm. those names. Yeah. Um, just to kind of double down on that, you mentioned him right at the end there. But one of my favorite prospects in the draft last year was Joey Porter Jr. And obviously everyone knows the connection with his dad and yeah. uh, the Penn State, you know, connection. And and just can you talk a little about him and kind of what he means to this team and what he brings, you know, to that back end? Yeah, I mean, you look at his numbers as a rookie compared to like Sauce Gardner's numbers as a rookie, and they're very similar. Um, he is incredible in man coverage. And that, that's something that the Steelers were missing. Uh, you look at who they had opposite of him last year. I mean, it was Levi Wallace and Patrick Peterson, two guys who were like really slow and they, they needed that upgrade. Um, and once he became the starter, I mean, instantaneously making plays uh, against Cleveland in week two, he uh, had the game ceiling pass deflection. Um, they gave the Steelers the ball back and then they ran off the clock. Uh, against Baltimore in the first game, he had an interception of Lamar Jackson in the red zone that set up the uh, game-winning Pickens touchdown. So, I mean, he was making plays from day one, really. And, you know, they just acquired Dante Jackson as well from the Carolina Panthers in the Deontay Johnson trade, who, you know, Dante Jackson isn't, you know, elite, but it's very clear that the Steelers have one thing in mind. They want to get faster. Dante Jackson's fast. So <laughs> ha having him as, you know, either, you know, the second corner on the outside or, you know, a guy who's part of the rotation, if they do decide to bring in uh, another guy via the draft or what have you, um, I think that they're in a better spot uh, with their starting two cornerbacks this season than they were last year. It's just a matter of adding depth to that side. So yeah, Porter Jr. is a big part of what, not only what they're going to be in 2024, but in the future as well. That's a guy that, you know, is going to be a centerpiece of the defense for, you know, the next half decade to decade. All right, Jared. So they get the quarterback room in better shape there now with Russ and of course, Justin Fields, and you got to be able to be able to throw the ball to people, right? So yeah. some of the names we're hearing, we're hearing some rumors, of course, Tyler Boyd is out there, Odell Beckham Jr., more on the other side of things there. But also the Brandon Ayuk talk has been very hot and heavy yeah. over the last few days. I know you've been writing about it. Talk a little bit about what you think is going to go down for the Steelers. Does Omar Khan have another big deal in him when it comes to a wide out, or you think it might be more so a free agent signing like Williams or, or like Boyd? Yeah, so Tyler Boyd um, is, you know, the local connection everybody's making. He went to Pitt. He's from Pittsburgh. So, you know, they need somebody that they can put in the slot. So, I mean, he makes sense to, to that extent. Brandon Ayuk is very interesting, though, because he posted for the first time on X uh, today, for the first time in almost a year, and he added Mike Tomlin saying, hey, people are saying we, we're twins. What do you think with, like, the eyeball emoji? Uh oh and there was another tweet saying that the 49ers called Brandon Ayuk and he said no, and Brandon Ayuk liked the tweet. So there, <laughs> it looks like there's some things in motion that could be happening behind the scenes that like aren't confirmed or anything yet, but Brandon Ayuk is clearly having some fun, and it, I wouldn't put it past the Steelers to do anything, like to do another crazy move because this past week has been full of them. Um, Nick Farbaugh uh, from Steelers now on the Steelers beat made a really good point. Uh, AJ Brown went for a one and a three. I would assume the deal for Brandon. I would probably be pretty similar to that. Mm -hmm. The Steelers do have two third round picks now after the Kenny Pickett trade. So I mean, they do have a little bit of extra draft capital to work with. Um, if they decided that Brandon Ayuk was worth, you know, giving up a one and one of their third round picks, then, Hey, you know, that shows that they really believe in him. And again, it's a new era of you know, how the Steelers go about their business and it's, you know, go be aggressive and get guys who we know are difference makers and, you know, see what, what they can do rather than, you know, having to wait, you know, two to three years for these guys to develop. So it's, that's one that I'm going to keep a very close eye on. Um, just because again, the fact that he hasn't posted in a year and then just randomly does that out of the blue, <laughs> he's liking tweets saying basically that he doesn't want to go back to the 49ers. Uh, something's in the air and I'm excited, but that I also meant, you know, they, they do have the scheduled meeting with Mike Williams on Thursday. He's also going to meet with Carolina and the jets. We'll see what happens there. But I mean, if, if you told me, Hey, do you want Mike Williams or Brandon? I, you I know which one I'm picking. No disrespect to Mike Williams. I'm sure he's right. going to be much cheaper than Brandon. I, but <laughs> you get, you get what you pay for, for, uh, for the most part in the NFL. And, you know, I said this on a podcast the other day, like fans want star players until star players want star player money. money. And there's going to be, and there's going to be fans that complain, Oh man, he's going to cost so much. Yeah. Guess what? He's also really damn good. So 
I would absolutely be on board with uh, acquiring Brandon Ayuk, figuring out the rest later when it comes to the draft and whatnot. They still have needs. You know, they still got to get a center. Um, and they would probably still like a little bit more depth in the secondary and perhaps another tackle. So there's things that still need to be done, but if you can get a great player, you get a great player. So just, yeah. uh, you kind of answered this, but just to double down on it, you don't have to talk at length for it, but sure. you mentioned it, it might cost a first and a third. And you look at this receiver class, which is a pretty, you know, pretty damn good receiving class, at least sure. at the top end of it for you personally, not any reporting, just you. And I, like I said, I, you kind of alluded to what you want. Would you prefer to give up that first for Ayuk, or do you, would you prefer to just take a receiver with the first? I think it just depends on the receiver and what the plan is. Um, you know, if they, if they wanted, you know, somebody like, you know, a Brian Thomas out of LSU, I def, I wouldn't hate that. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, you know, the family guy mystery box thing, like, oh man, a boat's a boat, but you know, the mystery box could be anything. It can even be a boat. You know, Brian Thomas could be good. He could be anything. He could also be Brandon Ayuk. Well, you might as well just get Brandon Ayuk at that point. You know, he's still mm -hmm. only 26 years old. Um, so he still has a lot of good football ahead of him. I know that fans would probably worry a little bit about, okay, but what, what about when it comes time to pay George Pickens? That's still a couple years down the road where you don't have to necessarily worry about that yet. So I think they can play their cards right. They can have their cake and eat it too. And if you can get Brandon Ayuk, you get Brandon Ayuk. I would prefer them to do that rather than draft a guy. But again, I wouldn't I wouldn't hate it if they were to draft, you know, a Brian Thomas or or someone of that nature. I was Scott, I was wondering why you wear your Arizona State hat. Now I realize we were talking ah, about Ayuk. Ah, see, so you got sense. it. You see. Oh my gosh. I love I love guys who can read between the lines. All right. So Jarrett, before we let you go though, I the last time we did a show together was about eh, the last quarter of the NFL season and we were talking about Mike Tomlin's future because it was still yeah. up in the air and you and I and I would I would shock people when I tell them how long it's been because of how how his career has gone, how long it's been since Mike Tomlin has won a playoff game, right? So we went through all that stuff. So of course, and you told me back then, hey, the Steel organization loyal, they're not going to get rid of him. So in essence, he stays there. But when you look at what Omar Khan has done, and you got to give him credit for what he's done, but how much of this maybe too is the Mike Tomlin saying, hey, listen, yeah, I want to stay here and you want to put some more pressure on me, but you got to give me the pieces I need to win. I think that that is a very big factor. Um, and Dave Damashek and Brooke Pryor actually talked about it on the latest uh, Minus 3 podcast, mm -hmm. um, where I do think that a lot of it was Mike Tomlin being like, look, we got to make some moves and Omar Khan was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. I think that it was a very much a cohesive thing where it wasn't, you know, one guy wanting one thing and another guy wanting the other. I think that both Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan were very aware that, okay, what we have now isn't working. Let's, let's make some moves and let's get aggressive. So I think it was a very cohesive, um, a cohesive thing where both of them agreed that we need to, we need to do something. We need to make some moves. Let's go and do that. So Credit to both of them um, for that. And credit to Art Rooney, too. I mean, the guy running the ship, I've given him a lot of flack over you know, the last year or two, but you know, I also got to give credit where it's due. Um, but I, I I don't think that Mike Tomlin has a hot seat, but I do think that he realizes that, okay, you know, there isn't as much leniency as I originally thought. So, you know, he's going into year 18 as head coach. He only has a playoff win in four of those years. So, I think that he's definitely feeling it a little bit. And I think that he is like the fans is kind of tired of, you know, this playoff drought. They haven't won a playoff game in seven years. Um, and I, they're certainly feeling that. So I do think that it was a very much, um, you know, a cohesive thing where owner Art Rooney, GM Omar Khan and head coach Mike Tomlin were all like, look, let's let's get aggressive here. You know, let's let's try something new. And kudos to him because everything that they're doing, the fans are loving and it's been this has been a very exciting time to be a Steelers fan. And usually on March 19th, that's not, that's not the case. <laughs> well, and, and you know what, you, you look at somebody like Tomlin, of course, the Rooney family and the history there with the Steelers <laughs> and Omar Khan and the history, it's sort of like you, you can get comfortable and that's what it seemed like you, you get comfortable, you win games. It's not like you're losing games. You don't have bad yeah. teams. You get into the playoffs. You're not winning in the playoffs. And so, so for those guys to maybe get in a room together and say, you know what, we're better than this. We, we got to get over this hump because we all want to have a legacy and that legacy is important to everybody, including the fans, most of all. So let's get it together. Let's go out and get what we need to win, especially keeping up in that division, which has gotten better. So uh, yeah. that's, that's a really interesting story there in itself. And, and I think a lot of it too, you, you kind of alluded to it. I think that, 
you know, for the past few seasons, you know, whether it be true or not, but for, just from my perspective, it just felt like they were, they were competent. They were, yeah. they were, con- they were content with, you know, being yeah. nine, 10 win teams, give themselves a pat on the back up another year over 500, another year being at least relevant. Um, it just felt like they had become professors with tenure where they didn't have to change anything nice. because they weren't going anywhere. Um, but I, I do think that there is something in that building now where the, where they're feeling the heat from the fans. You know, there were more empty seats at Acquisition Stadium than people are accustomed to last year. Um, and I think that they felt that. So I, I do think that there was a lot of conversations that needed to be had that were had. And we're seeing a lot of those things come to fruition, especially if you go back and watch like the introductory press conference for Russell Wilson. Mike Tomlin looks like just <laughs> he, he is beaming and he's he excited. Is. So um, th- these moves say coming into the offseason, Omar Khan, Mike Tomlin, our room were like, yeah, we, we need to make you know some changes and we're going to do that. And a lot of fans are like, hey, OK, you know, we'll believe it when we see it. Well, they, they put their money where their mouth is. And um, kudos to him for that. And I'm excited to see what uh, what else is in store. Not to All be right. a- not to be a downer, but Nathaniel Hackett was beaming on his opening. Press I'm sure. I'm Wilson sure. Too, so yeah, so it worked out better. <laughs> I, I would like to think that, you know, Mike Tomlin and Arthur Smith is a better situation yes. for, for Russell Wilson than Nathaniel Hackett was in Denver. Um, oh, yeah. Thousand percent. Yeah. So, <laughs> and again, like I said before, they don't need Russell Wilson to be, you know, 2014 Russ you know, right. he's running around and, right. being, and being crazy. They just Last need... year's Russ was good enough. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. If Russ is 26 touchdowns, eight picks next year, the Steelers are a playoff team. Yeah. No 100%. question. I agree that's, with you. That's all they need. They just need competency. And I think that he can be competent. All right. Well, you got to keep up with Jarrett. Follow him on x.com at Jarrett Bailey NFL. As I mentioned, too, if you're a Steeler fan behind the Steel Curtain, check him out there. And the Pump Fake podcast is fun stuff. So make sure you watch it, listen to it. It is a Believe podcast. So do that now. Jarrett, as always, my friend, thank you so much for being with us. And we'll catch up with you soon. I was good talking to you, boys. Take care. All right. Take care. There you go. We got some uh, we got some Pittsburgh Steelers in. Ryan, love it. One of the most beloved teams in America. I know a lot of you out there watching probably don't like the Steelers, but there's a lot of Steelers fans. And fascinating story there. I mean, listen, I people were like, oh, Russell Wilson, this Russell, and 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 I know you being a Broncos fan, um, you know what he was doing there last year, and it was good. I mean, it was it good enough to win. Uh, to get into the position to be a playoff team? No, but they had a hot streak at the end of the year. He turned it on. And I just kept saying, people people here in Ohio are like, Russell Wilson's done. He's washed, blah, making all the memes with the let's ride stuff. I'm like, dude, he's having a better year than than he's he's like ranked 12th in the league. What are you talking about? He's, he's far better than half the starters in the league. So uh, it, it'll be interesting. I think that's a great situation for him with Mike Tomlin's personality, his propensity to let guys be who they are to be a player's coach. Uh, and the same for Justin Fields. We didn't get to get in depth there with Jarrett, uh, with, with Justin Fields, but I think that's what Justin Fields needs is just, you know, no pressure. You're coming in here. You're going to sit behind and learn from one of the best guy who's won a Super Bowl and an MVP reward. You're going to be able to sit behind him and learn from him without the pressure. And then Mike Tomlin too with him, I think is going to be a great tutelage situation for Justin Fields. Yeah. I'm really curious how that will fully play out. Cause you know, obviously things change, but when, when Russ, signed traded whatever to the broncos he mentioned in his introductory press conference he wanted to play for 10 more years like he put a, a <laughs> actual number on it 10 more yeah. years um and he's only two years into that so based on that he wants to play eight more years now i obviously things change over time and you do get older but he only signed a one-year deal with pittsburgh mm-hmm. and it, it seems like with this trade for fields they're kind of signaling like hey this is your team this year but then we want to pass the baton to a younger Justin Fields after. So it'll be interesting to see if Russ is kind of playing for that next for that next team this yeah. year in a way, or yeah. if he plays well enough where Pittsburgh's like, hey, we'll give you a three-year deal and, and see where this keeps going. Yeah, and I think you know they have to, by May 2nd, Ryan, they have to exercise the fifth-year option on Justin Fields, or then he becomes a restricted free agent next year, and or they could franchise tag him. So, so it'll be interesting to see. I think I don't think there's any doubt that they'll they'll exercise the option. It's 25 million bucks or 25.9, whatever it is, uh, for that, because it's sort of like you got to, it's an insurance bet, right? Because yeah. you, you, if something happens to Russell Wilson because of the age, or if he suddenly loses it, I don't think he will, but if he did, um, or it doesn't work out for some reason, then he's on that one year deal. He can walk away and you got a guy there, right? That you can at least have starting experience that you feel obviously, cause you traded for him. Uh, has the ability to maybe be better and reach the potential that so many thought he had. 
So I think Pittsburgh's in a great situation uh, from a quarterback position. You look at a lot of teams around the NFL, including one of the teams I cover, like the Raiders, it's far less settled than that. So uh, Pittsburgh, I think, is in a, in a pretty dang good position there, and we'll have to see how it works out. But that division, I said it. We talked yeah. about the Bengals at the top of the show signing Trent Brown. The Browns, I mean, you look at the athletics recent. It just came out on Tuesday. Their power rankings, they have the Browns number seven Yeah. after the move they make. They made, uh, and by the way, I want to give a shout out to Giovanni Ricci, tight end signed for the Browns, local kid here. I know his father, actually. His father owns a great yeah. steak restaurant in Cincinnati called Tony's. If you're ever in town, make sure you go check it out. Tony's. But yes, Tony's is fant just fantastic. So Giovanni's, there. but they, they got a good team. And then you got Baltimore still. So yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's going to be that little nugget. Yeah, just that one. So it's going to that division again. I thought last year it was going to be great. And then it kind of went south for Pittsburgh and for Cincinnati, obviously, because of because of injuries. But man, that's going to be tough. That's going to it's going to reminds me a little bit of what we thought the AFC West was going to be a couple of years ago. Yeah. Remember when when everybody thought the AFC West was just going to be lights out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it unfortunately didn't come to fruition for a lot of those teams. But yeah, I mean, it's the Browns are the true not maybe wild card's not the right word because they were good last year, but like, I still don't know what to make of Deshaun uh, Watson. Like if Deshaun Watson <laughs> is back to what he was in Houston, yeah. like they're the best team in football. They're, they're yeah. bet the chiefs are obviously the defending champs, Pat Mahomes, we know all that. So I'm not trying to downplay the chiefs, but when you just look at position by position, overall roster plus coach of the year with Kevin Stefanski, that's the best team in football. If Deshaun Watson is mm. even a fraction of that. So he's just the biggest, like what, what are you going to get from Deshaun Watson? Cause they've knocked it out of the park at all the other levels. Um, and just adding, and you know, they just added, they just got Jerry Judy and just extended his contract on Tuesday as well. So, I mean, yeah, they're, they're a team and then no slouches on any of the other three teams you mentioned. So it's a damn good division. It's a good division. Uh, and we'll have to see, and maybe, maybe next week, Ryan, maybe we'll do, maybe you and I'll get together and we'll do, We'll just keep it to five because we, we, we can talk uh, a lot. Or maybe we'll do 10. <laughs> we'll do our power rankings. But the athletic Ooh. power rankings were really interesting because this is post-free agency or middle of free agency, obviously, because yeah. there's before the draft. Um, because they And they had the Texans at number four. Yeah. Which, you know, I get. Like, after the moves they made, the year they had, the way C.J. Stroud. Now, of course, C.J. Stroud's coming in his second year. You never know what happens, right? As good as he was last year, you don't think there's going to be a drop-off. But stranger things have happened. So, yeah. We'll have to see, but we'll do that at some point. Before we get out of here, Ryan, I want to talk about, I don't know if you saw the announcement that came out on Tuesday as well, that Netflix, a new show called Receiver. Yes. Did you see this? So Netflix, uh, a new sports series called Receiver. It's going to follow uh, this past year. Well, they already followed them, but they're going to actually share it with us now. Devontae Adams of the Raiders, Justin Jefferson of the Vikings, George Kittle, the 49ers. Now you're saying, wait a minute, George Kittle, he's a, he's a, he's a tight end. He is technically, but I would argue that many tight ends today in the NFL, including Travis Kelsey, those guys are more used as wide. You see him go out far wide all the time. So I can see why they chose him. And plus, he's a colorful guy, so it's TV. Debo, Debo Samuel from the 49ers. They love them some 49ers. And Amon Ross St. Brown of the Lions is going to come out. And it's uh, produced by NFL Films Omaha Productions, which I believe is... Paid Manning. Peyton Manning's company. He's in, in 2 p.m. Productions. Who knows who that is? Probably his brother. Um, so you saw the one on quarterbacks last year. Now they're doing receivers, which I'm sure is going to come out. Uh, it's going to come out in the summer to get us through that dead period of no football. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll be able to watch this. But these series where they're following players around, I think the quarterback one was so successful last year. It's great. That that they yeah, and it was great. And they reproduced it now with the receivers. So next year I think they're gonna do uh safeties. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, but but they're they're obviously going through where they have star power. Yeah. And there's plenty of star power in other areas too, so it's good. But but what do you think of the receivers? I mean, again, two from the 49ers, I think they were they were betting the 49ers were gonna win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And in season two of quarterbacks is coming out also with the yes. new back quarterbacks. Yes. But no, I think it's a good list. Obviously, I'm sure they're very bummed. They did not do Travis Kelsey instead of George Kittle. <laughs> oh my. Can you imagine? Um, the Swifties would have been they, everywhere. Yeah. They probably picked these bef well before last season because there's a lot of production time that goes into it. And so after the whole Taylor Swift thing, they're like, oh man, can you imagine if we were following around Travis Kelsey right now? But <laughs> 
<laughs> Overall, I think it's a good list. I'm really excited to see, you know, being an SC guy, Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he's one of the top five receivers in the game. Yes. Um, has a has a real colorful in a in a good way, just an exciting kind of family history with his dad being a world weight bodybuilder and his brother yeah. also playing in the NFL. So um excitement there. You know, George Kittle's a great guy, a fun guy. Debo, you know, again, I, I think you're right. They were seeing them as a powerhouse that they would get a lot of traction from. There's some other receivers I thought would have been you know, really fun to see, um, you know, a guy like Mike Evans, I think would be interesting. Um, yes. Any, anyone on the Bengals, you know, when you look at uh, Jamar chase could have been interesting. Um, if you want like more drama, maybe like an Odell Beckham jr. Would have been interesting <laughs> if you're going more like the, he's not really a, an old school diva, but for current NFL, he kind of fits that mold more. Yeah. Um, but it'll be really fun to see it because I, I love the first season of quarterback and you get that really deep dive. Um, and we'll see that I think Justin Jefferson will be interesting because Kirk Cousins was featured on quarterbacks and then now you get Justin Jefferson and it'll be, I'm assuming it was last season film. Yes. So you'll get some play run over from Kirk Cousins, but then he gets injured and you get the Josh Dobbs hysteria going on. And then you have all of Justin Jefferson's contract stuff going on. So, so he'll be a really interesting one, interesting one as well. Yeah, it's fascinating. The only thing I would say to them, I wish they would do with these series is because you have all the star power and I get that it's television. You got to get people to watch is I wish they would also include like one young guy. Mm -hmm. So like imagine if they would have chosen Puka Nakua last year. Yeah. I mean, who would have known? Right. But yeah, somebody somebody young coming into the league who's into the league first time. And trying to understand that. And then they're paired up with a veteran receiver or something like that. That that would be kind of cool. But I'm excited about it too. Because summer, there's nothing to watch. And so it's going to be really good. Yeah, hopefully, Scott, they'll, if they do it for, if they're already planning season two, hopefully they'll get like Marvin Harrison Jr. Because obviously he would be a great one. Young Huge. rookie, top five pick probably. You Father. Know, Hall of Fame dad. So yes. Or just do Brendan Rice too. You know, why Brendan not? Brendan Rice would be great too. He'll be a mid-round pick, but you know, he's Jerry's son. So why not? Sure. <laughs> the best ever. There you go. All right, it's time for us to get out of here again, Ryan. We will be, of course, back week. My friend, as always, have a great rest of your week, and we will be right back here next Wednesday. Always a pleasure, brother. Thanks, as always. Yes. Also, make sure you follow Ryan on X.com. You can talk football with him there, at Ryan Dirud, L-A-F-B. I am at LV Gully, and, of course, Sports Not. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here. Hit that notifications bell and also give us a thumbs up if you would. And you want to keep up with the latest NFL news, including free agent signings, including trade rumors, NFL draft run up. We're going to have a ton of draft coverage. Make sure you check out sportsnot.com. For everybody here, have a great week and enjoy a great weekend out there. Hopefully the weather is getting warm where you are. We will talk to you next week.